every morning. We ask the question, how do we shift the mindset? How we, do we change the habit? And how can we get people on board? The language of sustainability and communication and participation is actually the key to connect us. Nordic Energy Research traveled through the Nordics, talking to thought leaders and exploring the potential of public participation as a driver with Nordic solutions to global challenges. I could just see that we needed some big changes in, uh, in society. I saw that people were really willing to do some changes in their own lives, but we need to make those changes available and accessible for everyone. Public represents the, the demand and also the demand for some renewable options. That's where the people can show their voice in the most uh, efficient way. The demand is there and it's, it's up for the companies to supply that demand. Not everyone is constantly thinking about this important infrastructure because it usually works very well and you don't really see it. <laughs> we are very used to that we always have electricity available. We just plug in and it's there. People have forgotten the, all the technology behind it and forgotten how important it is. But if you can participate actively and you see, OK, if I charge now my iPhone, I need the wind turbine at least to move a little bit. <laughs> For the bath water I want to have, I need to have my solar power. I think it will create more awareness of where it comes from and more understanding. And also, I think it makes people willing to actively then contribute and also to be more aware of energy savings. At least I hope so. The public, when they are aware of all the facts about climate change, it, it shows that they are much more willing to accept political action. They could also give ideas to the politicians. We have come now away from this being an idea to actually having a movement where there are a lot of forces behind. The big system have very challenging agendas because of the fossil fuels and the climate. Who take care of the ordinaries? The kids, the generations in this shift, looking at life, not only your own life, but a common life. The, the balance between utilizing and, and preserving uh, nature is very important and it's very delicate. So more clean energy, but at the cost of nature all the time. That is very much the pattern. What is the purpose of harnessing more energy? What do we want to use it for? Climate policy has come quite far, you know, in terms of really taking in, you know, we need to do something, we need to be very, very careful. What about making the same kind of, you know, learning from that and also make policies for nature? Where we get some help at the moment is actually the, the social movement. It's telling policymakers that we need to have people on board here to actually make changes. And for us, that is a way into actually examining what are the, the questions here of inequality, whose interests are really here represented and whose are ignored. When we make speeches to, to policymakers or so on, the, the social movement is now making, making it very somehow ripe for, for social analysis, in a way. <laughs> take care of the humans before we take care of the resource. Because if we have that settled, then the resource is easy peasy. When we have those parameters, then we can actually do big change. The public participation and the community power approach is actually that we want to have a high level of involvement of the citizens. Because then you create a local ownership, not only by owning the, the, the things that we build or implement, but also uh, you have been a big part of the decision making. We have a long tradition of working with renewable energy and it has been moved and forward and produced by, by citizens, basically. In 1964, there were some people who were tired of burning oil to heat the houses. So they went knocking at the door at the neighbors and asked them if they want to form a district heating company. And that's how it all started. Public participation have been really important for our renewable energy development. In the beginning, it was so much about ideology. It was just because People who felt they would like to own their energy themselves and typically islands like to be independent. We like to do it ourselves. When you hook up to the district heating plant, you have to buy a small share. It's not a private company, it's a co-op. We have 1,600 shareholders in this company. 97, 
after the COP3 meeting in Kyoto, we tried to make this 10-year plan how to be self-supplied with renewable energy, electricity, and on heating and on transportation. And after 10 years, we, we reached our goal. Against all odds, we found our way by having a very big public participation. It's also okay to have another opinion than the majority, but people still in these dialogues and these public meetings, they are part of the decision-making. The guys from the municipality or the citizens or everybody comes with a blank piece of paper and we write down what we can agree on and all the good ideas that there are in the local society because the users normally have the best ideas. And that have actually raised up awareness of how do you reconnect, rebuild a community in a modern perspective with commercial tourism. We try to come up with ideas for the people in Akureyri to live a, a, a green lifestyle. We have been working on all the kinds of things related to both uh, environment, like waste management, as well as transport. Each household has like a green basket uh, where they put all the waste. And we have here in the, in the fjord, we have a composting plant. Get rid of our cooking waste through that system, and then we get the compost back for our garden. So that's a, and a good example of a, a circular economy. We want people coming from uh, all around Iceland to Akureyri. And to do that, they have to have uh, access to good charging stations. So we put them up uh, next to the library, in the city center, next to the swimming pool, so where people stop. We want lively uh, uh, municipalities uh, where you can see people. And you don't do that with a lot of cars. The whole town is covered in 15 minutes on an electric bike. All the kids from six to 16 they live within one kilometer from the school. But still, we have a lot of cars in the morning around the schools. Why? I have no idea. We need to understand why, and then we need to uh, come up with ideas how we can change that. When you have like small communities, you can sometimes make things uh, happen faster. It's easier to explain. It's e easier to connect things and uh, to get the people, both in politics and also just the people living in the area, to see the whole picture and how the dots connect. We can use those examples to introduce the same things on a larger scale for the rest of the country. The public voice was there from the beginning. The Norwegian EV Association, for example, was uh, established a bit more than 25 years ago. We have had organizations, NGOs, also uh, industry players that has been pushing for this. It was support from different areas. It's not just one side of politics or one type of people that were pushing for EVs. It was supported as a good way forward to cut emissions for everyone. The public responded really quickly. Already back in 2012, the market share was 3% and there were not that many cars to buy. In Norway, it was regular consumers that wanted to make a choice to buy a car that didn't pollute. In 2014, when the EV adoption was starting, the main driver for the, the people that were uh, purchasing EVs there, I think, is the technology. And this is the case very often for early adopters. They think it's, you know, cool technology. People are, you know, these early adopters are open to trying something new. That is still important for many, but I think more and more people are doing it because of environmental reasons. You need policy that is supported by people. You can't just use the stick, you also need the carrot. Instead of just saying, this is something you should stop doing, maybe you should rather say, this is something you can do. We support you in, in making the right choice. It is a public participation and the mindset of everybody, from the child to the oldest, it, it is the most important. I'm so lucky actually to be a part of this time to really try to do my best to speed up this transition. Um, it's really meaningful for me to be a part of the climate uh, movement to make change happen. I have trust because the Nordic country have the solution. So don't be worried, but believe.